Thanks for tuning in guys to the Pested Lawn Jidja and this is What's Wrong With My Lawn? <laughs> What's Wrong With My Lawn is a lawn series where I go out, get on the lawn of people who have lawn dysfunctions and give you a diagnosis and the repair. We're gonna use my five step approach of looking at patterns, color, water saturation, a debris test, and a pull test to figure out what's going on. Now let's start with the walkthrough in the front yard and the backyard so you can see what I'm talking about. Overall, if you guys remember right, we're looking to see if the patterns are uniform across the plane or if they're random. And the fact of the matter is everything from here to about right here is totally fine. And this grass, it feels so good. It's, it's so silky smooth, it's ridiculous. But then we've got these patterns right here. Almost looks like a, a snake is running through the lawn. And the interesting part is, part of the patterns, we're gonna dive right into color. We get right on top of it and you'll notice the color that we're dealing with, it's brown. Now overall, this one section is the only section with the dysfunction. Now we've talked about certain patterns in the past and this one actually has two randomized patterns with it. We've got one that's kind of a snake crawling through the lawn and then we've got another one with cheetah patterns. Now if you remember our suspicions about uh, spotted or leopard or cheetah pattern prints on lawns, those are commonly associated with lack of water which also when we look at brown areas, that is also another tell sign of lack of water. The worst thing we could do is assume, so we need to keep moving on with our diagnostics of doing the debris test, the water saturation test, and the pull test. When it comes to doing a pull test, the whole point of this test is we're testing for turf insects or to see if we have some sort of fungal matter that has eaten up the roots of the grass. In this instance, we are negative for turf insects. We're not finding anything. And the best way that you could do a pull test is by pulling out your bear claws and really pulling on the grass. No crabby pinchers, right? Or think about it this way. If you have a basketball, it's like palming a basketball. Uh, anybody can just rip the grass out and toss it. And that's not the point of the exercise. <laughs> Now the Ginger's been slaying lawns for about 20 years now and I've got some exciting news for you guys. I'm creating a space called the Lawn Masters Academy to help you at home be able to slay that lawn. The Lawn Masters Academy is designed to put a method to the madness of diagnosing your lawn. Whether you're a beginner lawn care person or an expert, there's something for you. I'm hoping to have the Academy up and launched in the next 30 days. If you want to get on the wait list, go to lawnmastersacademy.com and put in your email address. Now I'm in mountain, mountain territory here in Utah at an elevation of just below a mile high. The amount of water we want in the soil needs to maintain between six and eight inches. And I can tell you this time of the year, it's kind of a transition period where people haven't been watering the lawn and then they're kind of shocked that they have to water the lawn because the grass will start to die out and or go dormant depending on the species of grass that you have. So these water tests that I do with my AMS soil probe, they're very, very important. Now when it comes to doing a water saturation test, what I like to do in these instances when we have random patterns is I like to go to the greenest part of the grass first. And you can see I've got about a six inch plug. The watering is perfect. It's no wonder why the grass is so incredibly happy. Now the nice thing is we've got a lot of organic material coming through. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on camera, but we've already got six inch established roots. This is awesome for RPR. Uh, we've also got worms in here, which is awesome. Topsoil wise, it looks like we're dealing with a uh, sandy loam. We've got a little bit of clay content in here, uh, but a lot of sand. Now I absolutely love my AMS soil probe because I do this every single day. And the probe doesn't lie, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very, very dry, bone dry in the one area that I started in that was pitted. Now, the type of pattern of where it was at that was pitted is screaming drought. Okay, so here is the interesting aspect of the water probe. We know that the top layers of this section are absolutely wet, but below about an inch, they're completely bone dry. Now, when we get to this section right here, 
with our cheetah patterns, right? All this soil is completely bone dry until we get to right here, then we have water and then we're bone dry right here. Now, as far as the thatch test goes, we really don't need to do much. We just planted this grass last year um, and it's fine. We've got a little bit of dead debris at the very bottom end, uh, but we're still seeing soil, no problem. And no matter what area that we go to, it's going to be the same. So we don't have a lot of debris going on or enough to worry about. However, the light debris, my suggestion is gonna be is to take a rake and just lightly rake through this but we're going to try to revive it first now when it comes to the backyard it's just more in and of the same the water coverage is off and again if you have some sort of non-creeping type of grass like perennial ryegrass or uh, turf type tall fescue this is a casualty of war <laughs> like, you don't water properly it is going to completely give you the bird finger and die out uh, so at this point again i could say this till i'm blue in the face if you don't have the proper sprinkler coverage it is going to die out it's not going to live and you can literally see these patterns right all these rounded edge patterns and i know a lot of you guys out there are saying hey ginger that pattern looks jagged chunks of the grass have died out in between it but overall the pattern is round and when we're looking at round patterns with death on the other side they're commonly associated with faulty sprinkler coverage so this is what i want to show you if you look at it it starts as a rainbow it's it's a little bit more round than you might suspect all the damages towards the outside and then this edges out like this and on this side too so you can see where he tried to make this the appropriate sprinkler coverage adjustments which is why we have some bunching this going in but he's over watering just to keep this grass alive but then over here on this edge again rounded corners this is what we're looking at when we're looking at patterns of sprinkler coverage malfunction so here's the thing guys, the Bear Brug RPR, man, it looks, it looks sick. <laughs> like it is velvety smooth. I'm always happy with this RPR, but causation, faulty sprinkler coverage, not keeping it wet enough through the lawn. The root base is really good. Everything's looking good. So here's our game plan. Number one, we just adjust the sprinklers. It's really that simple. Number two, in the area that's experiencing drought stress, not because of faulty sprinkler coverage, but just getting on the sprinklers too late, what we're gonna do is put down some Essential Plus 101 or some Revive Granular. Here in about two, three weeks, we're gonna see what the damage is. After that, our next step is to grab a dethatcher, and we're gonna go through all the bald areas and we're going to scuff the surface. Now, in these instances where some of these patches are just very small and some of them are very big, you could technically use a hard landscape rake. No problem, just scuff up the surface. And we're gonna drop some seed and then put a light layer of peat moss on top and let the grass grow. Now, the nice thing is, is unlike Kentucky bluegrass, it takes 21 days to germinate. The RPR or the ryegrass is gonna do that in five to seven days regardless if it's warm or not. We can still germinate pretty regularly up until the soil temps hit about 75. And right now our soil temps are hitting right around 65. So we've got a small window to get this done. Well guys, that concludes this episode of What's Wrong With My Lawn? If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, hit the ginger up down below. You know we'd love to help you guys out. Till the next time guys, the Pest and Lawn Ginger. We're slaying lawns.